Today we're going to be going through the best settings for the ASUS XG27 AQWMG. This is their new 27 inch 1440p 280Hz 4th gen WOLED monitor. We'll set the screen up for both SDR and HDR modes. We've got the screen set at its default configuration initially. And the first thing we're going to want to do is come down into the system setup menu and change the power setting away from the power saving mode where you'll see that loads of the settings are all grayed out. We're going to change that to performance mode. That will give us full access to all of the on-screen controls. So we'll set the screen up first of all in SDR mode. And there's a few different options here depending on the color configuration that you want. So we'll come back to the gaming settings in a minute. We're going to start in the color section of the menu and the display color space is going to be one of your primary settings depending on which color space you want the screen to operate in. We're going to set the screen up first of all in its native full wide gamut mode. Now that will give you the most vivid, colorful and saturated image. It may not be as accurate for SDR, so we'll show you some alternative options in a moment, but we'll leave it on the wide gamut mode for now. Color temp we're going to set to the user mode. That will give us access to the RGB channels. So that allows us to tweak the color temperature slightly from the default. And we're gonna set this at 100 for red, 99 for green, and 99 for blue. That will just balance the white point a little better and give you a white point very close to 6,500 Kelvin. Saturation can stay on 50, no need to change six axis saturation or gamma. Those are both fine. Back in the image section, we're going to enable the uniform brightness modes. Now we prefer that for desktop applications and SDR usage as it avoids any unnecessary dimming and ABL. You can leave this off and the screen will reach higher brightness for SDR gaming and SDR multimedia, but we think most people will probably want to turn that on. So we're going to turn uniform brightness on. The brightness setting, we're going to move down to a setting of 26. Now that will give you a luminance of around 120 nits. If you want the screen to be brighter, you can set this at 35 for 150 nits or 50 for 200 nits. It's perfectly fine to set this at whatever you find comfortable for your usage and your ambient lighting conditions. We've just chosen 26 here to deliver the 120 nits luminance. Contrast can stay on 80. We'll come back to OLED anti-flicker in a moment and there's no other settings that we need to adjust there. So if you're running in the full wide gamut mode, that will give you the most saturated and vivid colors, but it may look too saturated and too vivid in some SDR applications. You may want to try our calibrated ICC profile that's linked in the description below as well. That will map the native full wide gamut mode back to sRGB for color aware applications like Photoshop and so on. So that's a good combination to use if you want to tame the wide color gamut for certain SDR applications. The other option, if you don't want to use the ICC profile or you want to try something with a permanent clamping of the color space, would be to use one of these other preset options. So the DCI-P3 mode will reduce the color space quite a lot compared with the native. It will still be more vivid and saturated than the sRGB mode, so colors may still look a bit too colorful, but it's a good halfway house if you want to tone things down a little bit. You can leave the other settings on exactly as we did before. So the same user color temp, the same brightness levels, they still all apply. The other option would be to switch to the sRGB mode. Now you can do it here, but we found that the configuration, particularly for gamma, was not particularly optimal when using that sRGB mode at the moment. So the better mode to operate in an sRGB color space if you want to all the time would be to come to the game menu and in the game visual menu, switch to the sRGB cal mode. So that is the factory calibrated sRGB profile with the color space clamped back to sRGB all the time. So you may find that that gives you more accurate and natural colors for SDR applications, for desktop usage, that kind of thing. You'll see that most of the other settings are now grayed out. The color menu is completely grayed out. Brightness is still available. We would set this on a setting of 27 to deliver 120 nits, or you can put it up to around 36 for 150 nits or 51 for 200 nits. Set that to whatever you find comfortable again. So if you wanna use the sRGB Cal mode and the sRGB color gamut, then this is the best approach at the moment as it gives you a much better gamma configuration than the other method. We've come back to the racing preset mode now, which is what we use for configuring the wide gamut mode and, and anything else. We can have a look at some of the gaming settings now as well. So you can obviously enable variable refresh rates here if you want to use them for VRR gaming. There's all of the other kind of game plus settings. Use any of those that you feel you want to make use of. Same with shadow boost. 
that can help quite well in dark games, but I would only enable this for certain gaming situations. In the image section, you'll see the OLED anti-flicker settings. The middle mode does help control flicker a little bit and reduce it. The high mode helps even further, but only because it disables most of the VRR range. And I think if you're going to do that, you might as well just disable VRR altogether and just play without VRR. So try the middle mode if you find that flicker is a problem in your gaming situation, or otherwise maybe just disable VRR altogether using the variable refresh rate setting there. We'll take a look at the OLED care section now as well. So we would recommend just turning on and leaving on as many of these as you can. If you find any of them problematic or distracting during your usage, you can turn some of them off, but you'll see most of them are enabled by default. So you've got screen dimming, outer dimming, global dimming. Outer dimming may become distracting. It can sometimes dim the edges of the screen and produce a vignetting effect. That's one that you may want to experiment with disabling. Screen move as well, we find that quite distracting sometimes, so you might want to turn it down to light, maybe even to off if you find it problematic. Again, as we say, just experiment with the other settings if you find them problematic, but they should all be enabled by default anyway. You can configure the Neo Proximity Sensor here, which will turn the screen off when you move away from it to help reduce the risk of burning. You can set the maximum distance for your viewing position, or you can use a tailored mode here, which will configure it based literally on your viewing position. So that's a good one to run through if you're gonna use that feature. We'd recommend it wherever possible because you might as well turn the screen off when you move away from it. We'll set the screen up now in HDR mode. So we've enabled HDR in Windows. As we've said on many occasions, we would only recommend enabling HDR in Windows when you're going to view actual HDR content. There's various reasons for that. They're all covered in our video that's linked in the description below. So do check that out if you want to know any more about that situation, but only enable HDR mode when you're gonna view HDR. You'll see that quite a lot of the settings are now grayed out in HDR mode. There are a couple of things that we want to change. Firstly, You'll see that the brightness control is actually grayed out and suggests that it's set to 100. Actually, it's not, that's a mistake in the menu. What you're gonna to want to do is come in here to the HDR setting, enable adjustable HDR, and then back in the image section, you'll see that the brightness setting is now available and it will go back to its default, which is 90. We think most people will prefer to bump that up to 100 to give you the maximum peak brightness and the maximum HDR brightness experience. So we'll set that at 100. Contrast can stay as it is. Leave uniform brightness turned off, otherwise it will severely limit your brightness in HDR, which we don't want. And then in the HDR setting, you've got a few different modes. We preferred the gaming HDR mode for the best balance between accuracy and brightness. You can try the other modes, but the cinema and console modes are pretty similar to this. The console might be useful if you're connecting a console and then you can run through the relevant uh, HDR configuration tool on there. But we'll use gaming for PC and desktop HDR. In the color menu, you can change the color temperature if you want. We found the native mode to be pretty accurate, so there's no real reason to change that. And the OLED care options can all remain on as they were before in SDR. No need to change that there. So there you go, there's the XG27AQ WMG set up in both SDR and HDR modes. Let us know in the comments section below if you've got any questions. You can find a link to the calibrated ICC profile in our database in the description as well. You'll also find the full review of the screen linked down there if you want to check out all of our measurements and data. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.